Hello everyone, welcome to the Cardiac Views lesson. Today we are going to assess how to place a probe and how to evaluate a normal heart under an anatomical point of view. And first of all, we need to focus on the technique. First of all, the probe. Uh, we need to choose an, an adequate probe to obtain good images and this probe is the phased array. It's a low frequency probe with a really small footprint able to get inside uh, the inner costal space. If we don't have uh, this probe available, from time to time we can use the curvilinear probe as well, but the quality image will not be so good as using the probe, the phased array probe. The second point to be considered during a cardiac evaluation is the screen marker. Uh, when we turn on the cardiac setup, the cardiac preset in our machine, the screen marker will be placed automatically at the right side of the screen. So don't be confused with the landmarks, don't be confused with the, all the references. First of all, we need to consider some uh, anatomical aspects before obtaining adequate heart views using our ultrasound machine. First of all is the normal axis of the heart. The heart is placed in three dimensions inside the chest and from base to apex it is superior to inferior, right to left and back to front. This is the position in three dimensions of the heart. So remember as well that the right side of the heart is slightly anterior and the left, left side of the heart is slightly posterior. As well, we need to uh, know and we need to remember that the atria are superior, more oriented to the base of the heart, and the both ventricles are more in the apex and this means inferior. There are different windows in which uh, we are going to place our probe to obtain images of the heart. And mainly are three under a point of care ultrasound point of view. These three windows are the succiphoid window, the parasternal window, and the apical window. First one is the succiphoid or subcostal window. In this picture, we are looking at the heart, which is totally placed in the center, in the middle of the chest, but actually the apex is pointing towards the left upper quadrant of uh, this uh, image. So although this can be our first thought, placing the probe into the left upper quadrant, there's something in the middle of our probe and the heart, and is the stomach. The stomach, which is full of air in normal conditions, that can block the ultrasound beam. So we're not able to evaluate anything here. So we need to move the probe and use the lever as an acoustic window. Take in mind as well that we need to hold the probe in a peculiar way, uh, using it not like a pen, like normally, but in this position to avoid uh, placing our hand between the belly, the skin surface, on the probe. We are going to place uh, the probe into the pigastrium or maybe right upper quadrant to use the liver as an acoustic window, and as every single cut which is transversal, we are placing them, we're gonna place the marker towards our patient's left inside the right. Because remember where the marker is placed in the screen during a cardiac evaluation. This is uh, kind of a remembering on how to place the probe and how to handle uh, the probe as well. The image we are gonna obtain is a four chambers view of the heart which the right side of the heart is anterior, so it is closer to the, to the probe. The left ventricle here separated by the septum. We can perfectly see the apex at the top right side of the screen. 
So we can assess two valves as well, and we can see as well the right atrium and the left atrium. The image on the top of the screen, which is a solid or solid-like organ, is the liver. The second window we are going to evaluate is the parasternum, and there are two different views in this window. Uh, most, both, of, both of them are related to the axis of the heart. There is a long axis, which is plus minus going from the patient's right shoulder to its, his left hip, and there is a short axis, which is totally perpendicular to the long axis. So the first view is the parasternal lung. For obtaining a parasternal lung, we are going to place our probe in the theoretical lung axis of the heart plus minus from the left, sorry, right shoulder to the left hip, pointing toward the, towards the right shoulder. This will be evaluated in the left, fourth left intercostal space. This is a tip how to place a probe and how to orientate. Uh, much better if we place the probe totally perpendicular to the skin surface, we'll, be, we'll obtain the parasternal lung. This is the image we are going to obtain for a parasternal lone axis view, in which we are mainly recognizing left heart structures. There is a valve right in the middle that communicates two chambers. The first one is the mitral valve, sorry, is the left atrium with the mitral valve in the middle here. Of course, the next chamber is the left ventricle. There is an outflow tract of the left ventricle communicating with the aortic valve. On top, there's uh, the most deeper, sorry, superficial structure in this level, which is the right ventricle. In posterior to uh, the left atrium, there's a round side, a circular structure, anechoic, which is the descending aorta. For parasternal short, uh, we need to place first the parasternal lung and then we need to rotate the probe 90 degrees towards the other shoulder, the left shoulder. Although there's uh, just one parasternal lung view, there are different parasternal short depending uh, the level of the cut. If we move the cut towards the base of the heart or if we move the cut, the axis, towards the apex of the heart. So there's few personal shorts, but there's just one personal long. From personal short, if we move to the towards the apex, we will see the left ventricle cut across like a small donut, like a small circle squeezing. If we go upper, I mean upper going towards the base, we can able to evaluate the left ventricle as well, which is bigger. The end on the first cut, and there's two structures in the wall can be uh, the papillary muscles or the tendinal cords. If we move towards uh, the pop, the mitral valve, we're gonna see it totally cut across, and which is like a fish mouth or whatever you can imagine to uh, assess. There's something moving like opening and systole and diastole. The last level of uh, parasternal short is cutting across the aortic outflow, the aortic valve, and you, we see perfectly the tricuspid valve, which is the aortic. The last view we are going to evaluate is the apical four chambers, when it's uh, obtained from the apical view, from the apical window. Probably this is the trickier um, image, the trickier window to obtain a view. So, if possible, we need to maximize uh, this window, uh, placing our colleague, or placing our model or our patient into the left lateral decubitus, just if it's possible. So, one of the tricks palpate the apex, uh, totally feel with their fingers where the apex is, and the marker needs to be placed towards the patient's left shoulder. 
orientation exactly the same that is orientated the heart but upside down I mean from bottom to top from left to right and from front to back this is the image in which we are supposed to find uh, the apical four chambers view and it's better if I if we place the, our patients into the left lateral of the cubitus. We're going to evaluate a perfect four chambers view placing the apex in the top of the screen and the right side of the screen will show the left side of the heart so the left ventricle the right side of the heart is in the other uh, in the other um, side and the left atrium and the right atrium here So that's all. Thank you for uh, everything. And uh, remember to place your suggestions, ideas, or whatever in the in this email address. Thank you.